if I can quickly share my screen and I kickstart from there. What I want to talk about uh, to all of you today, just to give you an idea where how digitally, you know, we are optimizing those assets globally for our clients. I want to use Anthony Slumber's quote, and uh, it's been great to know him. And there are two people who take care of Real Estate Innovation Academy, Drawer Pollock and uh, Anthony Slumbers. And Anthony says that the fundamental structural shift going on around uh, the demand for offices, I think successful buildings, what he says, will be those that combine ability to enable happy, healthy, productive people and with occupier companies that are interested in doing the same. And that's what we've seen last two years, that how with health and wellness engagement, tenant engagement has become such a big priority for these buildings. And buildings that meet want, needs, and desires for those individuals that host will be massively uh, valuable. And I think the bottom line crux of it, that the platform that starts with understanding it's not the building, it's UX, which is equal to brand and brand is equal to value. So that's what, which is very, very critical to understand. And I wanted to give everybody an idea of what is going to be in the technology. Why is it important for buildings to focus? The important bits is not just to bring everything at one go. It's about us understanding that uh, when you look at buildings, it's the people who are going to occupy those buildings. When you look at people, it's when you invest on those buildings, what are the kind of people who are going to be coming? The people lets you think about the digital, that how do you take advantage of that digital technology and data? And that's where you think, what is going to be my platform? Because platform is where your capabilities are strengthening. And that brings you then to your sectors, what you're focusing on, the services and solutions inside your building. And that brings you to the community and the clients and occupiers. So everything has to work all in all together. It can't be in silos. And that's the reason it has to work together. And when you look at this, every building today, everyone is just focusing that technology which empowers the real estate is focused on all these areas. It's not just that. Yes, it is important for us to look at uh, ESG today or you know the integration of smart based state systems, the distance tracking or CCTVs, HVAC, Wi-Fi. It's not just that. When you look at people, people are not bothered what's happening at the backside of the building. This is more towards the building side that you build the best of the technology to make sure everything works. This is what matters to a user experience. You got to look at creating and curating spaces where people thrive, requires the seamless integration of technology. So on your left-hand side is what a development of a building looks like from a front-end user experience. The right-hand side is what you bring to that platform from everything and anything needs to be right there. This is why you have to ensure the customer experience, uh, which is seamless across all the expectations of your client and visitors. The new technology, which is termed as PropTech today in real estate, has given those landlords and investors and global players, everybody had no choice but to rethink what they're developing. Even buildings which were being developed had to be re rethought. We need to rethink again what we're developing. The real estate sector today faces that urgent need of users demanding innovation and new functionalities. They're not there for a single time that I'm coming to the building and it should be just be okay. It's not okay to just think it's okay. Digitizing the real estate sector requires the adoption, I think for technological tools. And this is where you will have to create real-time added value, time savings, greater performance, uh, easier projections, data analytics, better user experience, and better UI UX to make life easier for all these people. And that's where you look at it as an integrated system. It cannot be in silo. And this is where it has to play a role for together. Again, very, very important to bring that to a notice that users who are coming in are just not coming into work to make sure that they are productive. Productive means that you will also have to give them those amenities services and that's where it plays a vital role to bring in loyalty or retail programs what about those awesome buildings who bring in retail fmb mixed use development malls office makes sense when you bring those offers privileges that's why it's a combination of uh, ability to work but also a combination of all those different things you give them as an added advantage that's where loyalty program plays such a vital role for our clients. I'm going to share a couple of things which technology is changing in the building effortlessly. This is some of those examples where we bring facial recognition, QR code, 
and i'll show you how it's working just in just a uh, you know couple of seconds when people come to the kiosk in 5 seconds they are able to register their face and as soon as they register their face with 99% 99.9% 9 accuracy it works with your face mask on and you just go to the turnstile and a 6 feet difference you just move in you don't even need to take your mobile phones out or have bluetooth doesn't need to be and all gdpr compliant data secured so all those tenants feel that i've been taken care of the other bit which works for a client this is what you see is a qr code which is dynamic which is built within the app it works at the turnstiles to the access control system destination control system so it makes life easier and accessible to a client when you look at a user or a visitor inside a building you should be able to book spaces which is flex why would i want a landlord and investor to take space space given it to a external party why not their own space they should be able to sell hot desking flex meeting room booking restaurant booking health and wellness parking which is available within the app itself you can change your car numbers bring a two wheeler four wheeler or even pay for a monthly pass day pass visitor pass all from the digital platform itself and then you have your service request which which happen from the app rather than you calling or reaching out to anybody else and all that is given from a building and from a tenant experience perspective then comes your visitor the visitor should be accessible from a qr code without having to standing and giving any details because they all should be pre invited you're coming to find out where you are should work with wayfinding the wayfinding doesn't need to have people or investors to spend hardware wifi to have to always focus it should be native within the app itself so that they can interact from point a to point b without having to have 4g or 5g telling them that where should i go without having to connect google maps it should work within the app then comes to having news inside the asset or the building what is happening updates emergency as to immediate knowing what's happening inside a building the other bit which has absolutely phenomenally worked for us is when you build those qr codes by scanning a qr code today i can reach out to the front of the house of that building at one second split that i scan it and i can reach somebody live at the other side rather than having to chat email call anyone if i'm stuck in the elevator in the parking in the night there's an emergency i should just scan the qr code whichever is placed anywhere and i can reach to somebody live on the phone within the app itself that's called you know uh, your teleportation to go to the next site next person in life this is something which helps us to build the communication with people from a leasing support which happens from matterport you can see live in a building the asset the restaurants the areas around it within the app itself it will give you an idea how the flow plans look like the transit information updates on news events what's happening inside a building and the content management system so you shouldn't be dependent on somebody updating anything for you but you should be able to do that on your own the other bit which has worked very well for us is the ecg esg component where tenants are asking what's happening inside a building how is the air is it good or not i want it i want to know from my app itself when i'm in the building how safe am i are you taking care of that building and taking care of us as tenants or not so that's why we're bringing connecting to the management system and bringing all that data into the app itself then comes a very important part of polls surveys perks privileges offers this is why when you spend so much of time in those buildings you want to understand what's happening in that building what can i do in that building what offers can i do can i book a salon can i book a gym can i do a pass can i book spaces uh, can i pay for that from my app itself yes you can you can do all of that within the digital platform but for a landlord everything comes that what can i track this is where we bring all that data into one place for landlords investors where they can track track usage what people like they don't like what is exactly their uh, way forward of working uh, what do they feel like doing and the connector system should be so easy that i can connect to building management i can connect parking food and beverage ordering service request everything at the back end so it should be seamless for the landlords and investors it be like one solution is one the other one costs another one the third one the fourth one it is a havoc for a landlord investor this is where you got to bring in everything at one place 
from a user experience and a landlord investor saying, okay, this works for me because it brings everything at one place. I want to give you some examples before I shut down because I think there'll be lots to digest. This is some examples which we've just developed for our clients in Australia where it works that how would it be a strategy to work from a precinct point of view? So we did that for a client uh, recently, very recently, where it's called Flow and Glow. We did that from requirements from, uh, you know, anything in the precinct from news, offers, uh, restaurants, engagement, events, lots happening. And people are so engaged that we tried to build something which is one of a kind. And people are just loving those services that I can just go on, hooked on, know what's happening in actual real time than actually to ask somebody what's happening over there. So we built all these things from food, supermarkets, fresh fruits, engagement, everything comes at one place for them. Some of the other ones before I end, just to show you some case studies. This is from a building in uh, Singapore where we developed a beautiful asset. Then Sydney, uh, where we also developed health and wellness for a super engagement. We have a complete team of experienced services who will manage the front of the house, engagement, data analytics with client. Health and well-being was such a priority that they built these yoga studios, uh, rooms, engagement, doctor on the call, recharge pods, augmented reality mirrors, uh, social fitness and well-being, such great things which our clients are doing. Something what we've done for Charter Hall, again, a big study, 45 buildings live, for Naveen in Sydney, for Mirvac. This is what we do with Gallagher systems with a mobile access. These are the turnstiles which are live over there. And we're looking at Dexas Gateway. And last but not the least, I think another building which we are live. So practically about 145, adding about 165 buildings going live by another month or so and adding about 200 houses developing for our clients. Very good. Thank you, uh, Tanajot. Uh, very nice presentation. So your company is designing these apps for your clients. That's clear? It's all in-house. We build the entire digital platform. It's just not the app. It's the That's on my phone. It's, it's called an app for me. I, I'm not a technical kind of guy like you. Do we have questions? Uh, how do you um, uh, face clients when you're kind of trying to sell a standardized product and that comes into clash or may come into clash with their specific requirements? Because I know that, that in the world of prop tech, that's, uh, that's the kind of, you've got the big... Um, what do you say, a range between SaaS on one side, out of, out of the box, uh, low price, and then enterprise on the other side, heavily customized, et cetera. So if I were to take an example of some of the buildings, we've actually, most of the buildings are live buildings. We would do a landscape assessment to understand what's presently inside that building from a digital perspective. What are they already using? What can be done to connect those existing systems with our platform? so that we don't have to end up with our landlord investor clients to so start reinvesting. And that's what we feel at CBRE. It's important that the relationship builds in such a way and the platform is open to engaging and doing the connections. I think one part of the answer to that question, a lot of the time when people go and give their solution, they only have a particular solution where they can't do anything else. What we've realized over the period of last four years that you've got to be open to connecting existing and bringing and merging together what's already there to make the best possible solution for a client. That's why we're open to connectors, doing those that if already a visitor management system works, why not bring it on board? Or if the mobile access turnstiles, existing readers can work, why not mm -hmm. around that and build our own access control and destination control, work with existing elevators, building systems which are already built, work through our partners within that system to engage. And that includes all that service which we'll bring for a client so that you don't have to go to anybody else. We will do the complete landscape assessment to see what works best for you and then start engaging. But again, we want to understand what's your present clients, who are the tenants, what are those age groups, what are the retail amenities, services, what's your future vision because technology can change in next six months. So you've got to understand what's going to happen in the next six months, one year, two year. You just can't think through for a smaller time period. But we're always open, and this happens on a regular basis. So you've got to do your landscape assessment correctly, work with the client, work with your back-end team, the front-end team, engage, and then take it on board. I hope that answers that question. By Mashallah, you have uh, uh, amazing services, and a lot of them. My question is, how often 
do you introduce new services or features and are they introduced in a scheduled manner in the sense do you do it every six months or is it whenever you have something new you just roll out one the second question how do you measure the effectiveness uh, and the usefulness of some of these features um, and what do you do when you find out that they're not getting the number of clicks they're they're not getting the uh, they're not giving and getting the value that you guys anticipated. So there is a complete roadmap we build along with our clients because this was not built like we are not a tech company. So CBRE being world's largest IPC, we always believe that you got to build a system taking feedback from clients. So we're part of the property management business uh, globally as what we develop as CBRE host. So what we look at is what is the problems and pain points inside a building, what we manage for our clients. So what we do is we understand what are the going to what are the changes which are going to happen for our clients in that building. Now we build the roadmap and we invest our own money building it. Now, particularly to your question that how soon or how often we do those changes, there are certain capabilities which we are already developing, like food and beverage. We have our own vendor PR system. We are not dependent on anybody else where you order food and then get it. We have our own system where retail add their menu items, their discounts, their offers, and there is no charge to the end user. But within the food and beverage system, there is a lot of involvement. Technology keeps changing. So we keep investing in the money. The client doesn't end up paying for that. There are things which we get a feedback that recently we got a feedback from parking. So we built that along with a partner or shared spaces. We are doing with office R&D or another client of ours where you can book spaces in a flex space or within a space where landlords can own their own flex space and you can book them through the app itself. The other part to saying that how often we bring those changes, we always keep looking that what is the new age technology which is coming. We invest those in our roadmap and there are, I can't tell you the number, but it's a million plus kind of investment which is happening in our roadmap this year. And we keep earmarking those investments every single year that what are the investments and upgrades and updates we need to do and if there is something else we need to bring in, we talk to the clients what they've asked for. And that's where we see that, is it going to help us globally or is it something locally? Or locally, we take it to the client so that we share those costs. But it's a global thing, then we will invest in that. The other part of it, which you're saying, how do we measure? I think that's the most important bit tech companies can deploy. But at the end of the day, how are they successful? This is where we bring the effort into it from an experience point of view. We have more than... 1,500 people managing the front of the house concierge in those buildings where they do see customer satisfaction scores. We have a KPI or SLAs where we need to manage that, let's say, how many downloads, monthly average users we need to have. What are they choosing? How much time they are spending? So all our clients get aligned to it because we tell them about it. We make sure they are aligned in their mind that we are talking about it on a monthly basis. We are reporting it back to those boards, executive boards, that how is the processes, what is good, what is not, what are the polls and surveys saying? So it's real-time data, we bring it back to them, that customers like this, they don't like that. And if you say that, what if I'm not successful and clients don't see it, they see it. Because we bring those CSAT scores, customer satisfaction scores back to them to make them understand what is happening on downloads, what is happening on events, what food has been ordered. Now in the fact, just to add on that, why clients feel it's very important. The retail areas, the FMB areas, the amenities, the services, all our clients are now on revenue shares with their existing tenants because they can track every single dollar, I would say dirham or whatever currency, is being spent and they can track it through the data analytics that who's doing well and who's not doing well. Should I renew their lease or should I bring something else? What are the polls and surveys saying? So we bring those back to the client so they can start thinking out of the box that what next to be done. Just the way every new workplace is thinking of chief innovation officer, health officer, engagement, even landlords have their technology systems built in such a way that they need people like we would partner with them. It's not a service provider. We should always look at partnership so that it's long term, not short term. And we should always keep investing into it so that landlord sees value. Because just to compare it with a tech company or a startup, they would have to raise capital all the time to keep investing. CBRE doesn't need any of that. So we keep investing into a platform 
on and on again. And some of these things have come back to us that you need redemptions. You need, offers. as I said, loyalty programs. And we're doing it live for our clients. The facial recognition, the QR code, the visitor management. There's so much happening. And we're doing those engagements. 